we're going out of St. Joe, Baton Harbor, out of the St. Joe River. Um, we're gonna head out uh, down the coast about six to eight miles and run some thin fins, some some Brad's fins, and uh, hopefully get some kingos. Uh, last night we had some good king action, caught some really nice fish, so uh, we're just gonna take a nice downwind stroke, down nice downwind sweep through the zone we've been fishing and hopefully get some fish and uh, we'll see what happens. Our plan was to start out by chasing kings in the same area where the guys had caught a few the night before, with a backup plan to fish for cohos in shallow water if we couldn't find the kings. All right, we're running kind of a shallow running crankbait, thin fin, brad's fins type uh, body baits here, a lot of oranges. Um, um, we're going to stagger them in the water column vertically by using lead core. Uh, this particular side is going to have one, two, three, and four color lead core. Other side, I'm uh, going to run some copper, um, some different other means to get them down a little bit and stagger them in the water column. We're in about 25 to 40 foot of water. and um, Once we get a depth that seems to be an active area where we're taking a lot of fish, we'll target a few more baits in there and hopefully we can get a few on the deck. Michigan Lake Trout. Laker. Not what we were really expecting, but we'll take them. We're on the board anyway. There's another one. Yep. Hey, Dan. Get the clicker out of the way. What do we got going on here? Uh, a little double. Got a little double action going. I got a little custom painted hot and talk. My yak lure is here. It's something I use walleye fishing. Thought we'd give it a try out, out here. See what happens. There's something on there. It's not much. Okay. It's just got a little beef to it. That'd be a triple. <laughs> yeah, that would be a triple. of vinegar. Oh, look at how beautiful that one is. Well, we hit this, uh, we hit a triple, actually, we had a quad, and then when we cleaned things up, we realized that we had a little coho on our diver. Well, in the spring of the year down here in the southern part of the lake, these fish tend to be in small groups and pods or even schools so most generally when you get into a bite like that and these coho stay in a smaller group you want to spin the boat get after it get right back on and go right back through them and usually you can produce a large box of fish in a short period of time you end up figure eight in a, a location as you're going and you just kind of keep up with wherever those fish move you just keep on them by doing your little figure eight in the water and it keeps keeps you on the bite. A lot of Lakers in this zone. It's not expecting that. Last night's king extravaganza is what we're on. Tonight Lakers and Cohos. Fish on. One color. Oh, one color. <laughs> well, we were having a tough time finding the kinks today, but the lake trout were getting bigger. Today we were fishing off of a pontoon that's designed for the big water and all of the equipment that you need to fish it. Um, first of all, the, this Angler Quest 824 Pro Troll is a triple tube. Um, I look at the triple tube as a key thing uh, for the big water to give you that little extra buoyancy to keep you up on top rather than pushing water. You're up on top, skipping on it. Um, it just helps performance, helps you, uh, enables you to hang a bigger motor to be able to give you the good performance. This boat also is equipped with uh, a nice big live well in the back that you may have seen that we put the fish in. We're using it as a cooler today. It's pretty cold out here. Um, it's a 26 gallon live well and on the rear of the boat, the, the gunnels or we call it our, our uh, 
binary wall system. It's a four and a half inch wide uh, double wall system. It allows us to put uh, uh, track systems for putting uh, rod holder systems, downriggers, things of that nature. Um, also, the big radar arch uh, that's above me here is a really unique feature. It really helps uh, put a good vertical spread to your rod holders and when you adjust them, it keeps them nice and high and off the water for when you're running boards. Looks like we got another fish going. Oh. Oh. Coho! Well, in my opinion, the cohos, you know, are all in the lower part of Lake Michigan. Um, early in the year, very temperature oriented. Um, I'm not sure exactly what bait fish they're targeting, but they're obviously traveling north uh, as the water warms and, and um, the southern lake is just so predominant with these cohos and as uh, things progress throughout the year they slide their way up the coast and um, we're still very low uh, down in the southern part of the lake right now but uh, as time goes on they're going to migrate their way up and in my opinion it's all food oriented food based uh, traveling trying to find that meal to keep them growing catch of the day right there <laughs> Gonna have to hold that one really close to the camera. Right? Yeah. <laughs> Ooh, got a little king and a little cool. Well, let's try to get the hooks out of him, getting him back in the water. There we go. Put that back. We got, we got one. We got a, it's a silver fish. We got a tugger. Got a wire diver, so we can't get too horsey on it. Yep. Right back downwind. Spring King, Henri. Well, we've we've had a pretty productive afternoon. We've been picking away. It seems to have caught few more lake trout than cohos and we've had some smaller fish and we've been waiting to see a king bite or a big fish bite and we think we finally had it happen when this diver took off. Get close here. This is the fish we've been waiting for all afternoon. And hopefully we can get it in the net here in just a second. That's a nice fish. Even though we didn't catch as many kings as we were hoping for, it felt good to be back on the open water. Special thanks to Brad and Dan for having me out for a fun night of fishing here on Lake Michigan.